All right, my friends, we're going to take a look at how to install Arc OS on the Ambernic RG353V. You're going to need a smaller SD card to hold this operating system, a larger one to store your games and media on, and a way to connect them both to your computer. So we'll cover the installation steps, common problems you might run into, how to add games and box art images, and finally some basic changes I like to make for a bit more dynamic experience. Let's get started. I will put a link down below, but the first thing we want to do is head over to the ArcOS download page. We'll grab the download for the RG353V and VS. I would use the G Drive or Google link. It's okay if you get this couldn't preview file. Just go ahead and click download and then download anyway. And as we wait for the zip package to download, there's a few other programs that we might need to have on our computer. So let's grab those. The first program we want to download and install is 7-Zip. This will allow us to extract the zip file that contains the ArcOS image. Next is SD card formatter. This will allow us to format the SD card that was included with our AmberNIC if we choose to do so. I'll talk more on that in just one moment. The final app is called Win32 Disk Imager and we'll use this program to write the ArcOS image to our SD card. And by the way, the links for all these softwares will be in the description. Now just a quick note about your SD card options. Your first option is to use the generic SD card that Ambernic often provides. I would strongly advise against this because these cards are junk and often fail. The second option is to go with a name brand SD card like Samsung or SanDisk. These will prove far more reliable than the cheap generic one Ambernic uses, so this is the recommended method. The third option is if Ambernic supplies you with a Kioxia SD card. This is a Toshiba brand and is more reliable than the generic ones they often provide. In my experience, I have not had one of these Kioxia cards go bad yet, so if you're supplied with one of these, it's okay to use it. With that out of the way, let's connect our SD card to the computer. If you get this format message, you can just cancel out of it. Now we're going to format the SD card. If you're using a brand new SD card, you can skip this step, but since I'm going to be using the supplied Kioxia card, I'm going to go ahead and reformat it using SD card formatter. Now I will open Win32 Disk Imager, but before I can write the image, I need to right click on this 7-zip file, and I want to extract the files right here to my desktop. And it's a big image, so it's going to take a little bit to fully extract. Let's fast forward. Now we want to select this folder icon and point to the location where we extracted the image file. We can hit right and we'll be asked if we're crazy if we really want to do this. So just verify that you're writing to the correct drive and then say, I'm crazy man, let's do it. Once again this part takes a while so we'll fast forward. Hit OK and if you're prompted again to format any drives, just cancel out of those messages. And we can now eject the SD card. Let's go ahead and pop our SD card back into the RG353V or VS, whichever you have. We'll power it on and we'll let ArcOS do its thing. So this is the first problem you might run into. If you get a black screen, a garbled screen, or just a blank one like this, likely you have version 2 of the RG353V. Uh, version 1 uses a different screen than version 2 and so uses a different driver. If you see the ArcOS splash screen and you can tell it is continuing to install itself, 
you're good to go and you can skip the next section. Us troubled souls that need to handle this, we're going to tackle it and we'll catch up to you in a bit. Let's power off the device and we'll remove the SD card. Go ahead and plug your SD card back into your computer and we want to go into this boot partition. And we want to rename the rk3566-dc.dtb file and put a .v1 at the end of it. This is the driver for version 1 of the RG353. We don't want to use it anymore. Rather, we want to use this .v2 version. So we will rename it, and we'll simply get rid of the .v2. Now we can, once again, eject our SD card from our computer, and we'll head back over to our handheld. With the SD card installed, we can go ahead and power it on. And that looks a lot better. Now we can sit back and let ArcOS do its thing. This does take a while, so we'll again fast forward through. And I need to adjust the screen brightness, but we're looking pretty good now. So now we're ready to add games. We want to take our second SD card and pop it into the second slot. And in ArcOS, we'll navigate to Options. We're going to go into the Advanced menu, that one there. And we'll scroll all the way down to Switch to SD2 for ROMs and select it. And it will now set up that second SD card for our games or our ROMs. Once it is finished, it will restart emulation station. We can hit start, go down to quit, and shut down system. And we'll remove that second SD card now and connect it to our computer. Back on our computer here, we can see the SD card. And I like to rename it just so I can easily identify it among all of my other drives on my computer. So I'm going to call it ROMs. And now when we open it, we see a folder for each of the systems the RG353 will play. So for time purposes, I'm not going to add all of my games, but I'm just going to grab a few select ones. I'll first start with some Game Boy games. I'll also grab some Game Boy Advance games and move them over. And again, just to speed through here, I'm going to grab a few more systems. And once I have everything moved over that I want, I'm going to eject my SD card and move it back over to the RG353. Here's what it looks like now that I've booted into ArcOS. I have each system listed that I added games for. And I can go into the list here and pick one and start it up. So now let me show you how we can get the missing box art. We first want to go into the Options menu, and then want to go to Advanced, and then scroll all the way down, and we want to select this option that says Wi-Fi On. Give it a second. And after it reboots, go back into Options. We're going to go all the way down to Wi-Fi. We want to connect to a new Wi-Fi connection. Go ahead and select your network or SSID, and then enter your Wi-Fi password. Once we're verified and connected to our Wi-Fi, we can press Select then Start to exit out of this utility. And now we're ready to download BoxArt. So from the ArcOS main menu, we press Start, go down to Scraper, we have two options here. You can use the Screen Scraper or the GamesDB. Screen Scraper requires a username and password. So if you don't have one for that particular site, you can get one. Or we can just use the GamesDB. We want to go down to Scrape Now 
and then I like to just scrape a few systems at a time you'll see why here in just a second so I'm just gonna select the systems that I added games for for right now I'll check those then I'll head back out here to the main scraper menu I'll highlight and select start and as you'll see this takes a little bit of time to scrape each game so that's why I like to do it in bite-sized chunks and just do maybe one or two systems at a time or maybe a few more if I only have a handful of games for each system at any rate I am gonna fast forward through this here as it does take a few minutes after it's finished scraping we want to come down here to quit and then restart emulation station and it's not perfect but when it comes back up we can see that we now have box images for most of our games now I just want to share with you a couple of settings changes I like to put in place it's nothing revolutionary but something that I feel makes the viewing experience at least a little bit more pleasant for myself so with the game open you want to hold select and press the X button and now in the RetroArch quick menu we'll go down to shaders and then with them turned on go down to load this shaders GLSL directory then the CRT directory and I'm gonna load this ZFast CRT shader and when I go back into the game it just gives it a light scan line effect that makes the image a little more softer on the eyes and a little more pleasant to look at in my opinion. I pretty much use this shader across all systems on the 353V. The other change I like to make is a small one. It's only for Game Boy so take it or leave it. But I prefer the original Game Boy color palette which you can set if you again open the quick menu with select and start then go down to core options and under this Game Boy or GB colorization you can open it up and set it to internal. Once we do that we can back out and we see that beautiful puke green. How I've missed you. If you're interested in buying an RG353V exactly as you saw configured in this video with ArcOS pre-installed and an additional Samsung SD card be sure to visit our eBay store. Link is in the description. That will wrap it up for this video. Until next time, happy gaming, my friends.